Hebrews chapter number 11 is where we're going to spend most of our time, so I, I would like you to hold your place right there. But I want to begin tonight by turning to uh, uh, Romans chapter 10, if you would, Romans chapter 10, and uh, I want to share some thoughts with you tonight. I want to preach tonight on this subject, standing on the Word, standing on the Word. And I want to kind of continue the thought from this morning's message with Brother Epley. He should start out there in John chapter 1, talking about how Jesus was the Word of God. Amen? And uh, we certainly want to uh, kind of continue on that, that train of thought tonight about the written Word of God. And uh, but we want to read verse number 17. One of the dynamics of the Christian life <clears throat> is this intermingling of faith in God and faith in His Word and the Word of God. Faith and the Word of God. These have a correlation. These are tied inseparably together. If you intend as a child of God, born again, blood washed believer, if you intend to move on for God, if you intend to live for Jesus Christ, then there is going to have to be a mingling of faith Okay? And the Word of God. You have got to put faith in the Word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 10, verse number 17, it says this, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Our faith is built as we associate ourselves with the Word of God. Hearing God's Word preached is a tremendous way of increasing your faith. How many times... I have been encouraged to trust God more uh, as I've heard the Word of God either sung, taught, or preached. Amen? Hearing the Word of God. There is something about being under the hearing of the Word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Let us pray. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. Thank you that we have a copy of the Word of God tonight before us and we're very thankful, Lord, that this is your word, and we uh, preach it and believe it, and we know that it's the inerrant, infallible word of God. And we're very thankful for that. We're thankful that we have uh, your word on the subject. And we're thankful, Lord, that we have a book tonight that whenever we read it, the author is always present. And we pray, Lord, that you'd open our eyes, that we would behold wondrous things of thy law tonight. If there be somebody listening to this message tonight that's lost and on their way to hell, we pray tonight, this will be the night they trust Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we know that we have a lot of loved ones connected with our church and friends and family and co-workers that need to be saved. And we pray, Lord, that you work in their hearts tonight. Help us, Lord. Use this message in a mighty, mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to understand that when you and I teach and preach the Word of God, we need to exercise faith in the same. Amen? And we need to understand that, that uh, God's Word does not fail. We don't have to worry about the Word of God failing you and I. The Bible teaches us that God's Word does not return unto Him void, but it does accomplish the thing whereunto it was sent. Amen? We need to remember that. The Word of God is very, very reliable. Now, you and I tonight, we have a, a, a Bible. I have a King James Bible. 66 books comprise this book. 39 old, 27 new. Amen. This is the Word of God. There are no other books that need to be added to. There's no missing books and all that sort of thing that the History Channel and the Nat Geo and all that other crowd, that liberal crowd wants to try to do in there. There are some that want to take these books of the Bible and say they're, uh, the liberals wanted to dissect them and take a pen knife to it and, and say it's not the Word of God and this part here is a bunch of uh, uh, fables and this is just a make-believe thing. This, this is the Word of God. Amen. And this is what we ought to put our faith in. No wonder the Bible has come under such scrutiny and criticism uh, because this is the, the foundation of our faith. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? Now, I want to mention to you over in Hebrews chapter 11, we have a record here of several people that are mentioned by name. Now, we do know that as you read this chapter, you'll find the statement made to this effect that there are many others certainly that could have been placed into this what we call the Hall of Fame of Faith by name. 
But there's not enough space to, in the book here to have put them all in there. Uh, and, and the Lord certainly mentioned these uh, for, for specific reasons. But I want to read to you a few verses tonight. And I want, as we read this, I want us to read this in a little bit different light. Most of the time when we read Hebrews chapter number 11, we read it with the emphasis on the faith. By faith this one done this and this one done that. But here's the thing we've got to understand. What are they putting their faith in? Well, you say, well, well, preacher, certainly it was God. Yes. But they had a word from God. And it was as a result of hearing the word of God, they exercised faith in that, they stood on that, and they were able to accomplish some great things. So as we read it, I want to, uh, I'll point out a few verses of <clears throat> interest tonight, and then we'll, we'll kind of get right down to the message. Number one, I want you to notice verse 1 there. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for or the substantiating of things uh, uh, hoped for and the evidence or the conviction of things unseen or not seen. For by it, elders, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the what? By the Word of God. Here you go, right here in the very beginning. Faith and the Word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And he goes right on down. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaking. How did Abel know what kind of sacrifice to offer? The word of God. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. Because God translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How in the world can somebody walk with God? And the scripture says in Genesis that any walk with God. How can somebody by faith walk with God apart from the Word of God? That is entirely impossible. There is no way somebody can walk with God without having a, having, having a relationship with the Word of God. What did God say about these things? How did, they, how did Enoch know how to please God? It was more than just putting his faith in God that there's a God out there. No, he walked with God. He pleased God. He walked by faith. Why? Because he put his faith in God's words. That is there. That is in the, that, it may not spell it out verbatim in the text, but that principle is there. By faith, Noah, verse 7, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Listen, he was warned of God. We're going to come back to this in a minute. Here it is. He's walking with God by faith in relation to the Word of God. Uh, by faith, verse 8, Abraham, when he was called to go in, out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obey. Here we go. It's specific here. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and heirs with him that of the same promise. For he looked for a city uh, which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had what? Who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand uh, which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now I've read all these verses. I'm going to come back to some of these in just a moment. But I want you to see here that there is a correlation if, you know, there's this, there's this faith movement out there, and it's a little bit misguided, and it's a little bit deceiving. There's a lot of people out here in the Christian circles and Christian realms, 
And they have overemphasized faith to this extent. They, they, they're encouraging people to put faith in their faith. And the Bible nowhere indicates that. In other words, you ought to believe this, this, and this, and if it don't happen, it's because you don't have enough faith. And, and what they don't realize they're doing is they're emphasizing their faith. It's not the amount of faith that we have. It is the object of the faith. Amen? My, if I have faith in my faith, I'm going to fall flat on my face. You don't muster that thing up. Faith is simply taking God at His Word. That, that's all that faith is. And it's believing that God will do something, not that God can. God can do anything He wants to, and we all know that. But faith is believing God will do something. Taking God at His Word. God said something, I believe it. Amen? Amen. And listen, folks, tonight we ought to stand on the Word of God. Now, I want you to know this, that standing on the Word of God is a very safe place. It's a sacred place. It's a serious place. In Mark 11, 22, Jesus said, Have faith in God. Standing on the Word is, is simple. It's just simply putting our faith. When somebody says, I'm standing on the Word of God, they're saying, I'm putting my faith in the Word of God. Now, I just want to share four things tonight that I believe uh, about standing on the, the Word of God. Number one, standing on the Word of God causes you to endure. Did you hear what I said tonight? If you will stand on the Word of God, it will cause you and help you to endure. Now look at verse number 7 again about Noah. The Bible says here, By faith Noah, by faith Noah, being warned of God, not seen as yet, excuse me, warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing art to the saving of his house. Now this, this preacher now, this, this man of God, this prophet, for 120 years worked on that ark. Now, now get this, it's found in Genesis chapter number 6. This man for 120 years, he preached. And the only ones that got saved was his family. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Aren't you glad his family got in? Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives and his wife. Hallelujah. That's good, isn't it? Aren't you glad his family got saved? That's a good thing. Amen. But you know what? <clears throat> he endured a great amount of criticism. You see, the atmosphere on this earth was much different prior to the flood. Now, these evolution people and these liberals out here, they don't want to believe in a flood. They, they think that's just old wives' tales that if anything, it was a localized thing. It wasn't a flood that covered the whole earth and every mountaintop was covered. I mean, they say that can never happen. I want to submit to you tonight, there is a whole lot of information in the Scriptures. If you'll just believe God's Word, there's a whole lot of things get explained out here in nature. Amen? And science is not meant to disprove God. It's meant to help us study and understand God, how He created all these things out here that you and I enjoy. They say that the Grand Canyon, the Colorado River, uh, carved all that out over millions and millions of years. That's hogwash. i got a pretty simple explanation for the Grand Canyon. You ready? When the flood receded, guess what happened? It carved it out. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Hallelujah. I believe that's exactly what happened. This carbon dating method and all this stuff. Listen, <clears throat> if you just take God at His Word, a lot of that stuff takes care of itself. But, but see, the evolutionists can't, can't believe that. <clears throat> These liberal Christians, they don't want to believe that. They, 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 they want to buy into all this stuff uh, that the world propagates about how the world uh, was done all this. But hey, they done the same thing to Noah. See, they had never seen rain in Noah's day. There, has, there was never a drop of rain. You say rain, what was rain? Before then, the water came up, the mist came up from the, uh, the, uh, from the ground. It was a very tropical environment. Hey, I've got a buddy of mine that, uh, that now, well, last I heard he was down in uh, Kansas somewhere or another, but I've got a friend of mine who used to work at oil fields in Alaska. And he said one of the biggest problems that his crew faced was not the cold. One of the big problems they had was their trill bits kept getting mired up in tropical plants and things down in the ground. Now you tell me where all those old mound up, uh, ground up plants and things came from. I'll tell you how they, what are they doing way up north up in Alaska? I'll tell you why. It was from before the flood. How do we get all these fossil fuels? 
How do we get all that? Where did all that come from? From the flood, the aftermath, repercussions of it? It's a real simple explanation. But see, prior to the flood, there was no rain. And so, so Noah's talking about, hey, it's going to rain. <clears throat> it's going to rain. It's going to flood. <clears throat> and these people thought he was nuts. They thought he was nuts. What do you mean rain? What do you mean flood? <clears throat> you're, a, you're a crazy man. Why you, what do you build a boat for? Why are you building that great big boat? What, 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 and, and did you hear him mocking him day in and day out? Did you imagine him trying to sleep and a bunch of them getting drunk and carried on over there and carousing around and hollering, Hey Noah! What you working on that ark for? Can you hear him? Can you see the embarrassment maybe his boys is having with some of that? You know they had to work on him day in and day out all those years. But the Bible says right here, by faith, Noah. You know how you know what was you know how Noah was able to continue day in and day out for all those years building that ark. You know what was able to help him do that? I'll tell you what it was. He put his faith in what God told him. The Bible says he uh, being warned of God, word of God, right there. See that of things not seen yet. Hey, he hadn't seen no rain, and he's doing something. And everybody says he's a nut for doing it. But you know what? He may have been a nut, but he was screwed on the right bolt. Amen? Hey, this guy, he was right on target. And by faith, he believed God's Word. I'm going to tell you something. God's going to show us things in the Word of God. He's going to want us to do things. He's going to want us to trust Him for things. And the world is going to say we're nuts for doing it. But you know what we need to do? We need to go with God. Now, that's a whole lot easier preached and practiced, I'll tell you. Hey, I, we, we know our, our friend Pastor Lamar Whittemore. The things their church is doing. Hey, their church isn't a whole lot bigger than our church. And, I, and look at all the things that they're involved in. Look what God's enabled that church to do. To buy a radio station. To be purchasing a, a church building. Right there in the middle of Watertown, South Dakota. Hallelujah. And think about what they're able to do. I mean, these guys, they are, they are walking by faith. And they're just doing what God showed them to do. They're trusting God in His Word. And you and I are going to be able to endure some things as we stand on God's Word. When crisis comes, you and I are going to be able to endure if we stand on the Word of God. If you have the Word of God on the matter, you can withstand that crisis. Uh, whether it be discouragement or depression or persecution. Listen, you and I can stand against that. We can endure that if we'll stand on the Word of God. I've faced a lot of criticism in the ministry over the years and it's never easy. I've had people laugh at me while I was preaching. I had a lady in my first passion. They was mad at me. I eventually left there. But I'm, I'm trying to preach one night. And they're laughing at me. They're laughing at me while I'm preaching. They're having a three-way conversation from, from a person on this pew in this aisle to another person over here across the aisle in this pew and to the clear back to the back of the church while I am preaching. No respect for the man of God. I made a man. I made a man. No respect. I did what God told me to do. I was trying to go with God. I'm going to tell you what, it's hard to endure stuff like that. But you can if you walk on by faith and stand on God's Word. Amen? You and I can do it. Noah did that. Number two, standing on the Word of God causes you to be persuaded in the right direction. Now look here at verse 8 and 10. It says this, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Now, I preached on this several weeks ago and on Sunday morning, Abraham's steps to revival. And I highlighted several things there in the book of Genesis, chapter number 12 and 13, I believe it was, about all that Abraham experienced there on that, that, that journey. But God told Abraham to do some things. Now, he didn't obey completely in the sense that he should have left his family back in there in the cow. He should have left his family. He's supposed to come out from them. The Bible says that God had said unto him to do this and his daddy came and Lot came. Now eventually God separated all them and was able to do what Abraham was supposed to have done all along. But we do know that Abraham did leave. Amen. By faith he left that land where he grew up 
and went out across the, what we call the Fertile Crescent up to that Tigris Euphrates River Valley and followed all the way around over into the land of Canaan. And we find that when you study the life of Abraham, you find this fellow walked by faith. He obeyed the Word of God. God gave him a word. God showed him what he was supposed to do. And you know what Abraham did? He obeyed by faith. Do you all see that tonight? He stood on the Word of God. Abraham, where are you going? I haven't a clue. Abraham, why are you going to leave your families, <clears throat> your cousins and all that stuff? Why are you going to leave all those folks? Why are you going to, <clears throat> why are you going to leave and just start walking up uh, through this valley and headed, headed back to a land that you're not a native of? <clears throat> why are you going to follow that? Why are you going to go that direction? There's no reason to leave Abraham. Stay home. Stay around your family. Stay around us over here. We don't want you to leave Abraham. <clears throat> Why are you going that way? Can you hear folks saying that to him? But by faith, Abraham got his camels together, and what did he do? He started walking. Started heading to Canaan. He obeyed. God gave him the words, and this is what I want you to do, Abraham. <clears throat> Abraham had no Bible in front of him. He didn't have anything of the kind. Abraham just had God's word on the subject. And Abraham obeyed. What faith he had to have exercised. Can you see that tonight? He was persuaded to go the right direction. Somebody asked me, in fact, Brother Epley asked me how I knew I was supposed to come to Blair, Nebraska. Of all the towns to go uh, to start a church, why did you pick Blair, Nebraska? And I said, Brother, I said, I got me a map. I closed my eyes and I took my finger and I just planted right on the map. Now, that's, that's how I was supposed to go to Blair. I was just laughing and cutting that way because that's not how. How I uh, did that, I was a little more deliberation than that, <laughs> man. <clears throat> but uh, I told him how. I said, really, if you wanted to sum it up, Brother Epley, I'll tell you how I know I'm supposed to come to Blair. I said, God, in God's providential workings, He led me. And then I used a real basic illustration. If you've ever herded any cattle up into a truck or into a new field, you've got to kind of herd them up and just kind of work your way around and just kind of lead them and kind of gently push him along and get him to where you want him to go. I said, that's exactly how God led me to Blair. He just kind of pushed me along here and here. He'd open one door and close another and he finally just led me to where I was supposed to be. And you know what? If you'll walk, if you'll stand on the Word of God, if you walk by faith in the Word of God, the Lord will lead you and persuade you in the right direction. But you go contrary to God's Word and you and I live uh, uh, in opposite uh, of what God says, if you and I do our own thing and not what God wants us to do, if, if we want to do it our way and not stand on God's Word, and if you don't do it God's way, you have no Word to stand on. Amen? But if you'll do that, walk by faith. You know what? God will bless you. God will lead you and put you. Uh, you'll find His will about things. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, But trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct <clears throat> thy paths. Standing on the Word of God causes you to endure. It causes you to be persuaded in the right direction. Number three, standing on the Word of God causes you to embrace God's promises. Look at verse number 13, the first part. It says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises completely, that is. But having seen them afar off, <clears throat> they were persuaded of them. And they embraced them. Well, that's some faith, isn't it? You know, one of the hardest things about being a pastor, <clears throat> especially when you're trying to lead a church to do something that moves them out of their comfort zone, Maybe to, to do something that financially <clears throat> it looks like it's impossible to do. Um, practically speaking, it looks like there's no way that can work out. You can't figure it out. You can't, you can't scribble it out. I mean, there's no way you really you can just put your whole mind around the whole thing. It, you know, a, a building program or whatever it might be, it consist of. One of the hardest things as a pastor is to get folks to see something that they can't see. Does that make sense to you? Listen, Abraham and all these, and Sarah and all this crowd, they didn't get to enjoy 
completely the, the, uh, the totality of the promises that were made to them and to their seed. Abraham didn't get to enjoy all the things that God promised to his family. But the Bible says right here, he didn't receive it all, but he saw it afar off, and that was enough uh, to cause him to be persuaded to do some things. He embraced, he embraced that how? He stood on the Word of God. If you remember the account where he took his only son Isaac, went up on Mount Moriah, was going to go worship the Lord. Remember that? And uh, he was going up one side, and his boy, as far as he knew, God said, you're going to sacrifice your son, your only son, a picture of Jesus right there. He goes up there on that mountaintop, but what he didn't know on the other side was a ram going up the other side of Mount Moriah. And they get up there on top, and his boy gets the wooden order, and Isaac willingly laid down on that altar. That's a picture of Jesus, amen? Willingly laid down on that altar. And before Abraham was able to go through what God told him to do, God said, wait a minute. Of course, you remember, Abraham told you, uh, it says over in Scripture that God's going to provide a lamb. When Isaac said that, but Daddy, where's the lamb? He said, the Lord's going to provide it. The Lord's going to provide it. Well, you know what the Lord did provide, it, Amen. And we know from later on here in, 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 in the Scriptures that you, you're going to find out that from the New Testament that evidently Abraham believed that if he did take his, 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 uh, his life, the life of his son Isaac, that God was going to raise him up again. We find the New Testament, that's the commentary on it. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Abraham goes through all of that. He, he, he saw some things nobody else could see. And, and he, he embraced some things. He had God's Word on that thing. That's all that he had. And if God's Word is all you got, that's all you need. Amen. I want you to know that, that if you'll stand on the Word of God, it'll cause you to embrace God's promises. The Bible is full of promises. Some conditional, some unconditional. God promises us salvation. He promises never to leave us nor forsake us. I like that, don't you? I'm glad we lift our eyes up into the hills and hence come with our help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Hallelujah for that. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight if we stand on the Word of God? He'll help us. What time I'm afraid, I'll trust in thee. What promises we have in the Scriptures. You stand on the Word of God, it'll cause you to embrace the promises. And then last of all, standing on the Word of God causes you to confess your true identity. Look what it says in the last part of verse 13. Now, these all died in faith, having received the promises, and so on, and, uh, and, and embraced them and confessed that they were what? Strangers and pilgrims on the earth, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country and truly have it been mindful of the country from whence they came out they might have had opportunity to return but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God for he hath prepared for them a city. Amen? Aren't you glad about that? Doesn't that encourage your heart tonight? Listen, if you'll stand on the word of God it will help you to uh, uh, confess your true identity. Listen, this world is not my home. I am just passing through. Amen? I'm glad that this world, as great as it is in some ways, I'm glad that this world is, is not all there is. That's, uh, Brother Evan talked about that suicide rate amongst people in our country. It's tremendously high. In all age brackets. You know why? Because people... Uh, they, 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 they've got their eyes on themselves and on their problems and they, and they don't have no purpose. Life is futile. It's vain for a lot of people. There's that emptiness in their life and that emptiness is there's that void. And they, 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 they don't have God in their life. They're spiritually dead. The Bible says that, uh, that you were dead in trespasses and sin. Where, uh, before somebody is saved, they're like a they're graveyard dead. They're like a dead person. There is no life spiritually in them. That's why they don't like the Bible. That's why they don't like Christians. That's why they don't come to church. Listen, somebody that's lost, uh, they're going to have problems. You can't expect a lost person to understand the Bible. 
I don't care how you water it down. I don't care how you, you trade a pen knife to the scriptures and try to put it in the vernacular of the day. Listen, the Word of God is still the Word of God. <clears throat> the Bible still says a natural man, the unsaved man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For it's foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I'm glad tonight that we have the Word of God. And you know what? If you'll stand on the Word of God, it'll help you. It'll help you confess who you really are. Now, there's a lot of folk got religion. I mean, they, they can understand parts of the Bible more than, than the average lost person because they, they, they study a little bit about it and, and they got enough religion to really down their soul to a degree. A lot of folk got religion. Blair's full of religion. Blair's full of it. I mean, Washington County is full of religion. Nebraska is full of religion. The world is full of religion. Very few people got salvation. Very few people know what it means to be saved in comparison, comparatively speaking. But I want you to know that if you'll stand on the Word of God, when somebody asks you the reason to hope within you, you'll be able to tell them something. If you stand on the Word of God, it'll help you just, hey, not worry about what everybody else thinks. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes it to the Jew first and also the Greek. I'm glad tonight that you and I can confess to others, to our family, to our friends, who we really are as we stand on the Word of God. Like I've said many times, we're the only Bible translation many folk ever really read is our lives. If you realize that you were a living translation of the Bible, I wonder what your translation would say. What chapters and verses would be in your life? As people examine us and watch us very closely or at a distance, I wonder what they would say about our version of things. Well, I hope we line up pretty close to the Word of God right here, don't you? I hope it's pretty close, amen? I, I, I would love for it to be line for line, word for word. I'm sure it's not. But our prayer is, our aim is that we would just stand on God's Word. We have God's Word on the subject. Hey, like all these men in Hebrews chapter 11, all the women that's mentioned here, these people were moved by faith in God's Word. Faith and the Word of God go together. So then faith cometh by hearing, <clears throat> and hearing by the Word of God. You cannot separate the two. Somebody talks about how great faith they got. What's your faith in yourself? Your, your, your ability? Your family name? It better be in God's Word. How do you know you're saved, preacher? I'll tell you how I know I'm saved. Because of the Word of God. I can take you to chapter, I can take you to verse, and I can prove to you from the Scriptures without resting the Scriptures, without dividing and pulling verse out of context, I can take you to plain passages in the Scripture and prove to you where I'm going to be when I leave this world. And that's the most important thing to know. I can prove it to you from the Word of God. I'll never forget after I got saved years ago, um, I remember Satan come to me and began to cause me to doubt just a little bit. It kind of got me a little bit discouraged and a little bit down. It's hard to have a shout amen during the service and when the choir's singing and the preacher's preaching. Hey, it's hard to shout amen when you don't really understand about for sure if you're saved or not. Well, I was saved, no doubt about that, but, but I had a hard time. Um, the devil was fighting me, making me asking, I don't think, you know, uh, what if this and what about this? What about, I mean, the Satan just working on me. Just, I mean, it was just terrible. And I remember an old preacher. That I, uh, he's in heaven now. He was a lay preacher, had a rest home ministry there. And tremendous brother. And he had shared with me one time, just in a passing conversation. It's amazing what our conversations will mean to somebody. It may not mean a whole lot right then, but down the road it'll be something that'll help him. And me and him had this conversation about how when he doubted his salvation years ago, what he done was ask God to give him a verse. And he shared with me what God did and how he got the assurance that he was saved. <clears throat> and so, 
I don't remember how long it was till I really battled this thing, but it was just it was just like yesterday. It was just like being right there in front of my preacher friend right then as a young, young convert. And I remember him telling me exactly what he did. So I said, well, Lord, I'm going to do what Brother Wayne Desarn did. And so uh, I, I said, so I got my Bible and I went to the Gospel of John and I started reading. I got in my old, my bedroom there by my, my desk and I began to read and Man, I come across some great verses of Scripture. I came across John 3.16 and didn't do a thing for me. I knew the word. I knew John 3.16. Great verse. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son and so on. Man, that, I mean, I enjoyed it, but I didn't have that assurance. And I kept flipping through. I, kept, I, I went through every chapter, and I got to chapter 10. And I got down there to about verse number 9. And it says, I am the door. I'm going to tell you what, guys. I'm telling you what tonight. I got to John chapter 10, and it was like a light went off. The Holy Ghost of God was with me. I didn't feel Him a whole lot, but He, he showed up right then. He was there the whole time. You understand that. But, I, but, but the Word of God began to get a hold of my heart. And I remember, and I read that verse, and it was like the Holy Spirit said, Whoa, Andrew. Whoa, 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 stop right here. What did that say? And I went back and I read, um, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Man, oh man. And it's like the Holy Spirit said, Andrew, what did that say again? And I just kept reading that. And I kept reading that. And I kept reading that. And tears began to stream down my cheek. And I began to thank the Lord. And said, like the Spirit of God said, Andrew, did, did you trust put your trust in Jesus for your sins? Did, as he, as he was your sacrifice. He died in your place. He took care of your sin. Did you trust him? I said, yeah. The Bible says, I'm the door. By me, me, did you go through Jesus? He's the door. Did you go through him? I said, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm praying. I'm, I'm meditating on the scripture there. And it was just like a peace come over me like you wouldn't believe. And it helped me get a hold of that thing. To embrace and confess who I really was. I knew I was saved. I was doubting you. You understand what I'm trying to say. But the scripture made all the difference in the world. I was able to stand on the word of God. And I'm going to tell you something. When the devil comes around my way and starts trying to make me doubt and cast fires on me and uh, cast his fiery airs on me and tries to get me to wonder and worry and get myself all stirred up about this thing, I just pull out John 10 9 and say, Lord, right here it is. Now I'll just start reading it. Right there, that's what you see right there. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Stand on the Word of God. Stand on the Word of God. If you and I will stand on the Word of God, it'll help us to endure. Amen? Hey, it'll help us. It'll help us to uh, guide us and move us in the right direction. Amen? Hey, standing on the Word of God will help us uh, confess who we really are. And it'll help us to embrace the promises of God. I hope this message tonight has been a help to you. I hope it'll encourage you in days to come. Listen, all we really have in life is God's Word. That's all we got. You say, I've got all these possessions. Yeah, you might have the possessions. They might have you, really. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. All we really have is God's Word. And that's all we need. Every head bowed, every eye closed.